He Network is back in jail, having been jailed yesterday evening for a second time by the High Court. The High Court found that he was in manifest breach of a previous granted court order granted to Wilson's Hospital School, his former employer, for him to keep away from the premises. Yesterday evening in the High Court, the Wilson's Hospital School went back again and they were asking the judge to take the radical step of jailing Mr Burke, saying that the situation in the school since the commencement of the new school year was untenable, unsustainable, and the school was at the end of its ability to tolerate his presence on the premises. Mr Burke's response was that the application was, quote, manifestly diabolical. However, the judge held that the contempt of court was manifestly clear. The judge gave his ruling despite interruptions from a number of Mr Brooks' family who were asked to leave court or were removed by Gardaí from the court. Mr Burke was then taken to Mountjoy Prison, uh, eventually he was taken to the Bridewell first. The judge decided that Mr Burke is to remain in Mountjoy indefinitely until he purges his contempt and gives an undertaking basically to stay away from the school. So it's clear that Mr Burke can leave Mountjoy Prison any time he chooses. Alex White, then senior counsel for the school, said that um, if Mr Burke could not enter the school building, he stood outside it, uh, still on the school grounds. That was causing a huge amount of disturbance and upset to school and its staff and pupils. The evidence from sworn statements submitted to the court by the chairman of the board of management, John Rogers, and the principal, Frank Milling, showed Mr Burke's continued presence was manifestly inimical to the proper functioning of the school. The court heard that the school had raised the matters, or tried to raise matters, with the Garda Shilkana, but were told by the Garda that it was a civil matter. Senior counsel said the school had also considered private security, but that Mr Rogers could not countenance the school becoming some kind of prison patrolled by security contractors. He said that Mr Burke's continued presence was a massive distraction to staff and students and was disrupting the operation of the school. The court was told that staff members had expressed worry and upset about the situation. The principal, uh, Frank, or Mr Milling, said in his affidavit, he was locking doors to keep Mr Burke outside, which created a health and safety issue. It may also incidentally have created an insurance problem. He said he was also spending significant time trying to prevent Mr Burke from entering the school or monitoring him when he entered the premises. Mr Milling, the principal, said he was finding it difficult to carry out the functions as principal and was also concerned about students, in particular first years, having to navigate through a school where a serious or where a person was continually trespassing. He said it was a frightening situation where a person was able to blatantly ignore the orders of the court. Mr White, then senior counsel, said that Burke's presence at the school served no useful purpose and his only purpose was to demonstrate his defiance. He said constitutional rights were seldom absolute. Mr Burke, he, seemed, uh, he said, seemed to be of the view that his rights trumped the rights of others. He said the school was, with considerable reluctance, asking the court to take the radical step of jailing Mr Burke. Mr Burke, in reply, said it was a long time since the High Court had to deal with such a manifestly diabolical application. He said the application to have him jailed should not be countenanced by the court, and the court was, quote, dripping its hands in blood by doing so. He claimed the court was being asked to decide between a hanging and a shooting because he could not or would not deny his conscience and encourage young people down what he described as the destructive path of transgenderism. Mr Burke also appealed the decision to dismiss him. The appeal board hearing has not yet held, not yet been held pending the outcome of a legal challenge by Mr Burke to the composition of the board. He told the court he was awaiting reinstatement in his classroom. He said he had a right to a job and to participate in civic society while exercising freedom of conscience. As a side note, awaiting reinstatement in his classroom strikes me as delusional simply because the relationship between the employer and employee in this particular case would appear to any rational, normal person 
appear to be beyond remedy and beyond restoration but maybe Mr Burke will be successful uh, that remains to be seen he described Mr Burke described the orders of the court forbidding him from attending the school as fundamentally flawed he said that since he returned to the school he had received support from students parents and other staff members he said he had been greeted by students who asked him how he was and told him to stay strong he said he also received support from parents one of whom told him they totally agreed with what he was doing Mr Burke said that the students en masse had been enthusiastically in support of his presence at the school, at one point begging him to sign their shirts and blouses and annuals, as well as shaking his hand and taking photos at the end of the last school year. He described it as a flash mob and said the students were desperate for him to sign papers or sign scraps of paper and even a flag. He said it was distasteful that the school's lawyers would say in court that none of this was true. He claimed statements by the principal and the chairman of the board of management about fear, stress and disruption at the school were outright lies. He also told the court that the school solicitor had called Gardaí to ask for him to be arrested, describing him as a very, uh, describing this as a very serious matter. He said the court was not entitled to reach a decision based on false and fraudulent evidence and the school was teaching to have him jailed for refusing to dish out something to young people that could destroy them. He said the, the court had no moral or legal authority to make the orders sought by the school. That's an important uh, point in this whole scenario. Mr Burke is saying that the court, the High Court, has no moral or legal authority to make the orders sought by the school. If a court set up in accordance with the constitution of this state does not have the moral or legal authority certainly the legal authority to make an order how is society to be organized in his ruling the judge judge Heslin said that what was before the court was a very net issue where the school alleged mr burke had breached the court order he said the evidence before the court including mr burke's own evidence put that beyond doubt in other words there was no doubt that he was on the school premises trespassing. The judge said that Mr Burke did not dispute he had breached the court's order and he also demonstrated that he had no intention of altering that stance. As he gave his ruling, Mr Burke's mother, Martina, told the judge he was a traitor to the Constitution. When members of the Burke family interrupted the ruling for a second time, the judge adjourned proceedings for five minutes, telling the Burkes he was doing so to allow the temperature on your side to cool. Mr Burke's sister Amy was asked by Gardaí to leave court due to some interruption to another interruption. Another sister, Jemima, was asked to leave after a further interruption. His brother Isaac was carried out by Gardaí after falling to his knees when he was approached. His father Sean also fell to his knees but walked out after Gardaí lifted him to his feet. At least a dozen Gardaí are outside the court as the ruling was given. Judge Heslin said an order committing someone to prison should be a matter of last resort and he said deliberate disobedience of a court order was an extremely serious matter. He said that it was the will of the Irish people expressed in the constitution and legislation that court orders must be observed. It was an insult to every law-abiding citizen for someone who was the subject of a court order to decide unilaterally that it should be ignored which he said was the stance that Mr Burke was adopting. It's worth saying that again. Every law-abiding citizen must adhere and abide by and obey a court order. Mr Burke appeared to have a problem with this though and felt that the court order did not apply to him and had no moral or legal authority. The judge said that a court order was not an a la carte menu and it seemed that Mr Burke's central proposition was that he should be treated differently to every other citizen. Mr Burke's breach of the order was flagrant and his intention was to continue breaching it. He asked Mr Burke three times if he wanted to pur purge his contempt and give an undertaking to stay away from the school. However, Mr Burke refused to give an answer each time. It's just over a year since uh, he was jailed for the first time after he was suspended from his position and jailed for breaching a subsequent court order. The disciplinary procedure against him after he had objected to a request from the then principal to call a student by a new name and the use 
they them pronouns. He objected at a staff meeting and again at a religious service in June 2022. The court heard evidence of Mr Burke's behaviour at the event in June when he publicly voiced his objections to transgenderism and at subsequent meetings held where his behaviour had been discussed. He was jailed for more than three months in Montjoy prison and released shortly before Christmas last year. After Christmas he again continued to attend the school despite the imposition by the High Court of a daily fine of €700. Euros. In his judgment in May, Mr Justice Alex Owens said the school was entitled to suspend Mr Burke in August 2022 and granted the board a permanent injunction prohibiting him from attending at its premises as well as getting or granting damages of €15,000 for his continuing trespass. And it's that order granted by Mr Justice Alex Owens back in August 2022 that uh, is fundamental to this application to have him jailed. The judge said that the school's decision to suspend Mr Burke was, quote, rational and reasonable. Mr Burke denied any wrongdoing and brought a counterclaim, claiming that the disciplinary proceedings against him were unlawful and in breach of his rights. However, this counterclaim was dismissed by the court. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.